Greetings, my name is Charles Upton. This is the first of four videos based on my recently published book, Dugan Against Dugan, a traditionalist critique of the fourth political theory. Yep. The doctrines of the traditionalist school founded by René Guénon are an inspired epitome of the traditional metaphysical and religious doctrines of all places and times. They have literally changed my life. I do not see the traditionalists as infallible, nor am I blind to the difficulties that have cropped up in that world. Nonetheless, these doctrines are precious to me because they have given me a context that supports and informs my path to God. So when somebody with a large following like Alexander Dugan comes along and applies the names traditionalism and René Guénon to doctrines and aspirations that are as far from Guénon's ideas as can possibly be imagined, and Dugan is certainly not alone in this attempt, who can blame me for feeling violated? And when you have been violated this deeply, all you can do is either bow and submit to taking the blow that you know you may never recover from, or else stand up and fight. In this book, I have chosen the second course. What my book is about. Dugan Against Dugan provides the most detailed critique of the theories of Alexander Dugan yet published. Dugan's system embraces history, sociology, social psychology, political ideology, philosophy, myth, religion, archaeology, physics, technology, eschatology. The list goes on. Most of his critics, however, have addressed only one or two of these areas, relegating the rest to an intellectual terra incognita that serves only to convince them that this man Dugan is strange, mysterious, dangerous. Strange and dangerous he may be, but he is no mystery to those who have retained an insti instinct for the unity of truth and can therefore see how his seemingly scattered insights relate to each other and also how they contradict each other. I write as a representative of the traditionalist perennialist school of metaphysics founded by René Guénon as an intermittent peace activist against the American empire for the past 50 years, as a writer on comparative religion, as a Muslim, as a Sufi, and as a native-born American. No critic of Alexander Dugan is more in sympathy than I am with his attempt to ground political theory in metaphysics. And no critic is more outraged by the way he's tried to do it. This is why I have confronted him on every conceivable level in nearly every field that he has chosen to address for 539 pages. See, thick book. Alexander Dugan almost single-handedly has opened up a new and vitally important field in contemporary political uh, theory largely because he places his fourth political theory in the context of metaphysics and eschatology, the only perspectives that can fully comprehend the apocalyptic terror of our times. Unfortunately for him and for the rest of us, his metaphysics are inverted, his view of Orthodox Christianity heretical, his image of Islam twisted, and his flirtation with Satanism all too obvious. No contemporary political theorist has faced the doom of man more bravely. No social critic has seen the evils of extreme postmodern liberalism more clearly, yet it can provide no real alternatives. Besides providing detailed answers to many of Dugan's statements from three of his books, I've tried to accomplish a number of other things in my book. These include, one, giving a perspective on the U.S. peace movement in the United States over the last 50 years, including the 180 degree inversion of the American left and the dangers and potentials of the alt-right. Two, reflecting on some of the changes in the religious landscape of the U.S. over the same period. Three, considering what true American patriotism might look like in the 21st century. Four, presenting traditional metaphysics as a liberation from political ideology. Five, expanding the science of apocalypse as defined by René Guénon. Six, 
defining the principles and phenomenology of a particular kind of social activism, namely sacred activism, that consciously bases itself on divine guidance. And seven, giving a history of an international Muslim peace movement called the Covenants Initiative, co-founded by Dr. John Andrew Morrow and myself in 2013. How Dugan operates. First, he carries on political organizing by establishing identifications, by saying things designed to particularly appeal to many divergent groups. What we are divides us, he announces, but what we are against unites us. However, if what we really are divides us, our unity will be short-lived, destined either to dissolve into universal conflict or to be frozen in place by the imposition of an external tyranny. Second, he operates through contradictions. I'll give some concrete examples of this later on. The, uh, there is certainly such a thing as a mystical paradox. However, two contradictory statements cannot be true in the same way and on the same level. To believe that this is possible is pure postmodernism. Once we accept that the contradictory statements can be equally true outside of the attempt to give intimations of mystical realities, realities beyond thought, our critical faculties are stunned and paralyzed, rendering us highly vulnerable to suggestion. In other words, consciously asserted contradictions, especially if we accept them unconsciously, are a hypnotic technique. A letter to Alexander Dugan, which I've sent him through a number of channels. Dear Professor Alexander Dugan, I am writing to alert you to the publication of my book, Dugan Against Dugan, a traditionalist critique of the fourth political theory. Reviviscimus 2018, 539 pages. In it, I am pointedly critical of many of your published statements, though frankly appreciative of others. My criticism, however, far, far outweighs my appreciation and it can sometimes get pretty hot. You have reached out to Western intellectuals such as myself, especially those who love tradition and understand the abysmal corruption of the modern world, apparently promising to give us at least a virtual homeland in your neo-Eurasian movement. You have also been generous enough to publish my writing on two of your websites. My response now, however, after digesting three of your books, Eurasian Mission, The Fourth Political Theory, and The Rise of the Fourth Political Theory, is that even though I have opposed nearly every act of U.S. foreign policy for the past 50 years, I would never consider making common cause against my own country with any international movement or foreign power. Since I consider many of the leaders of my nation to be guilty of treason, I would be throwing, throwing away my right to denounce them if I committed the same crime. I share your loathing for postmodern liberalism and its outrageous attempt to deconstruct the human form, seeing it as an ideology which is as far from classical liberalism as cultural and Marxism is from the theories of Karl Marx, though both classical liberalism and classical Marxism have plenty of problems of their own, and I gravely salute your accurate, courageous, and where am I? Your accurate, courageous, and prophetic picture of the self-inflicted doom now faced by the entire human race, as well as your crucial attempt, no matter how wrong-headed it may be in actual practice, to ground political ideology in traditional metaphysics and eschatology. Beyond this, I entirely agree with you that the West, led by the United States, has been undermining Russian stability ever since the fall of the Soviet Union, offering provocation after provocation, and then portraying um, any legitimate act of Russian self-defense as a sign of expansionist aggression. On the other hand, I am not blind to the real expansionist aggression you have repeatedly advocated, nor to the elements of postmodern liberalism that you have incorporated into your, into your own fourth political theory. You define liberalism as the absolute evil and sometimes appear to say that it would take nothing less than a third world war to destroy it. But before you subject all humanity to revolutionary suicide, a phrase made popular by one of our homegrown American madmen, Jim Jones, I would advise that you begin purging your own ideology and movement of the last traces of the absolute evil you denounce. 
If you succeed in this, you may begin to realize that liberalism is now deeply engaged and far advanced in the process of destroying itself. In light of this, I suggest that you leave revolutionary suicide to the liberals and renounce your desire to immolate yourself and all the rest of us on liberalism's pyre. A third world war would be the end of humanity and likely the end of all life on earth if you believe that any good for anyone or anything could result from this cosmic crime, then I can only conclude that you have taken leap of your senses. Furthermore, as my wife Jenny comments, the most, those most likely to survive this kind of war, if any survival is possible, would be the Luciferian global elites. The common man who might still retain a shred of human decency and traditional sensibility would likely be wiped out. You claim, as one of the pillars of your fourth political theory, the traditionalism of the great French metaphysician René Guénon, a perspective that I myself firmly adhere to, which you defined as conservatism in its purest form. Unfortunately, your understanding of tradition, as Guénon defined it, namely, the science of universal metaphysics, which is epitomized in our own age by the great God-given religions and wisdom traditions, is woefully deficient. You give every appearance of attempting to expound upon a subject that you have never seriously studied. Apparently, relying upon the ignorance of your listeners or else their vague notion that esoteric doctrines, since they are inherently mysterious, can mean anything their exponent wants them to mean at any given time. There are certainly many areas of academic learning, such as contemporary sociology and modern German philosophy, uh, where your expertise far surpasses mine. But when it comes to tra traditional metaphysics, I have no hesitation in pointing out exactly where, either knowingly or unknowingly, you have departed from its central principles. Metaphysics is not just anything. It is one particular thing. The same is true of Orthodox Christianity, of traditional civilizational Islam, and of any of the other revealed religions or spiritual traditions, including the primordial tradition itself, from which, according to René Guénon, the other, um, all the later sacred, sacred traditions have branched. Due to your lack of solid intellectual grounding in these matters, your metaphysics is vague, Contradictory and contradictory and filled with glaring errors. Your picture of Christianity clearly heretical, and your presentation of Gainon's doctrine is totally inverted. Furthermore, your notion of Islam, my own chosen religion, is seriously twisted. To take only one example, you present the Takfiri jihadists who have killed even more Muslims than Christians, burning our mosques with copies of the Holy Quran still in them as legitimate representatives of the religion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And you continue to assert this even after these mad dogs headed by international mercenaries who have been willing to take funds, arms, and strategic support from the United States of America, the hated Atlantis, have been formally excommunicated by the Grozny Declaration uh, promulgated in the city of Grozny, Chechnya in August of 2016 by a number of Grand Muftis, as well as the Grand Sheikh of al Azhar, the highest authority in traditional Sunni Islam, a declaration that was seconded by the Russian Council of Muftis itself. To what degree these errors are based on simple ignorance, and how far they may be explained by deliberate and self interested deception, cannot yet be determined. If you can prove to me, that my suspicions regarding your motives are baseless. No one will be, will be more delighted than I. Nonetheless, in publishing them, you give every appearance of having taken certain sacred, God-given doctrines into your own hands, deliberately distorting them to serve political, various political agendas. Obviously, you're not the only one to have done this in human history. Nonetheless, this is a degree of sacrilege that must not go unanswered. I have issued this invitation to intellectual combat in line with the principle announced by the English poet William Blake in his epic poem, Jerusalem, namely, 
that the suppression of the, of the mental war by various hirelings in the camp, the court, and the university most ultimately lead to the outbreak of bloody corporeal war, a war which in our time would inevitably spell the final end of man. So I hope that you will read my book and respond to my challenge, possibly in the arena provided by Red Ice Radio, who have offered to host a debate between us. I await your reply. Sincerely, Charles Upton.